Good morning, everyone, and or good evening, depending where you are. I seem to make that mistake every day, every week. Uh, so good afternoon, good evening to our students in Europe. Um, so welcome to week three of writing Wikipedia articles. This is uh, this I think is maybe my favorite, uh, one of my favorite sessions of the class because this is where we get to dig into the final project. Um, so uh, I will be introducing the the projects that you'll be engaging with in, over the next few weeks of improving a Wikipedia article, um, and we'll be talking more generally about what is quality on Wikipedia, how is quality measured, um, what are what are the various kinds of review processes, and uh, and sort of how do how do Wikipedians think about and uh, and deliberate about quality in articles. So we'll be covering a fair amount of material today. Um, I I want to mention up front, and I'll try to uh, try to point out a, a couple times throughout it. We're, the things that I'm covering today are not necessarily things that you need to uh, remember every piece of. I want to give you a broad overview of how various kinds of processes work on Wikipedia, and you will not need to engage with all of these um, as you're working on your article. But I do think it's important to have a sort of a general framework. For, uh, for for how do you, how pro how articles move through uh, these review processes and uh, and what avenues there are for getting feedback on articles and collaboration and discussion. So we're going to take a look at a at a number of those today. Uh, before we get started, is there anyone who has any specific questions or comments on the work that they've done throughout the week? Uh, I've been watching the. Uh, the course discussion page and uh, some of the edits that that you guys are doing, and it's really it's great to see how active everyone's been. And I know that questions and uh, ideas come up all the time that we haven't anticipated in the course. So so please speak up now if uh, if there's something you'd like to to mention, or if it's something that's uh, that's more detailed and more in depth. Of course, the uh, the lab session is always a great place to do that. So we can dig into something like that on Thursday. Any comments or questions before we get started? Uh, let's see, Sarah. I think we've yeah. So Sarah G, I, um, I I think I sent you a private chat, but I'm not sure if it got through. Um, but I did. I saw a comment uh, that you had left that I would like to um, to point out to everyone probably a little later in the class. Um, so I hope that doesn't put you on the spot. But if you're willing to chat a little bit about that, why don't you? Um, try running the audio setup wizard at some point so that we can have a verbal discussion. And I'll, I'll probably get to that um, like about halfway through the hour if uh, if you're up for it. So, the um, why don't we start off by looking at the at the um, the final project page for our class. So I'm going to just start up my screen sharing here. So I'm going to go down to the, the bottom of our week three page. And at the bottom of most of our pages in the class, you'll see this table, which hopefully you're familiar with by now. And we're going to click on course final project description. So if you haven't looked at this page yet, now is a good time to do it. The, um, the WikiSue Burba badge, which you see on the right hand side here, is the, um, the award for successfully completing this class. and uh, it's, there are basically two measures for this. Uh, you, you, can, you can either, depending on whether you want to work on a new article that you're starting uh, yourself or whether you want to work on an existing Wikipedia article, uh, you're, go you're going to try to increase that at least one step on Wikipedia's quality scale, which is something that we're going to look at during this, during this session. And, uh, and also, over the uh, period of the entire course, you're going to want to make at least 200 edits to Wikipedia, and that includes uh, that's, that includes both edits to articles and edits to talk pages. So every every time you ask a question 
on our course discussion page or, uh, or reach out to one of your classmates, those count as edits. So that, that 200 edit threshold is something uh, I want to mention. It's, it, it's, been, it's been a bit of a, a challenge uh, for some of our students in past step sessions. So it's, um, if, you're, if you're pretty actively editing, you'll get there pretty quickly. Uh, some people tend to, be, tend to make larger edits, you know, think about what they're going to do and add entire paragraphs at a time and things like that. So it doesn't really, um, that doesn't tend to increase the number of edits that you've made as quickly, even though it's, it's, uh, it's just as valid a way to work on Wikipedia. So um, it is important to get to that 200 edit threshold to earn the badge, but it's not a problem if it ends up taking you a little longer than the end of the course. There's no, there's no time limit on earning the badge. So we have had students, uh, two of them in the last session, who did excellent work during the class, um, and it really, uh, they were, they were they actually, I would say, very much exceeded uh, our expectations for the class, but didn't actually hit that 200 edit threshold. So they just continued working on their articles and a couple of other articles after the end of the class and ended up earning the badge uh, after the, the end of the class. And that's fine. So don't be, don't be too intimidated by that number. Um, it, it may be a lot to hit within the class, but you'll get there eventually if you keep working with Wikipedia. So, um, if we scroll down here, the next session, section is on choosing an article, and that's something that um, that we've talked a little bit about um, how to how to find an article to work on on Wikipedia, and we'll delve into that a little bit more later in this session. Um, we'll we'll look at both starting a new article and finding an article where you have something to contribute. And then below this, we have <clears throat> some information about the different quality ratings, and so I'm going to. I'm going to leave this aside for now. This is something we're going to come back to. Um, but basically, I want, I want you to see that this is all right here on the final project page. So hopefully this will, um, this will be a good page for you to refer back to. It'll review a lot of the material that we're covering today. Um, so let's see. I, I actually just noticed at the bottom I have the wrong template at the bottom of this page. Um, so if there's someone who, uh, who knows how to make that change and wants to um, switch this over to the round three template, feel free to do that. Um, if not, I will come back and fix that at the end of the class. So uh, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pause for questions uh, before I jump into the featured article. Sarah, is there anything I should be looking at here? Hello, everybody. Um, uh, uh, the other Sarah was responding to yeah. your statement, just saying she doesn't doesn't have a microphone right now, but she can comment on the talk page. Or I was suggesting okay. that answering you by I am should be fine. Yeah, that'll be just fine. And uh, yeah, I, I appreciate your willingness to do that. I'm kind of putting you on the spot. So, but it was a it was a good uh, a really good example of of how to reach out to other editors, so I think, I think your classmates will enjoy hearing about that. Okay, so what I'd like to talk about first is the featured article process. So I guess in the, um, in the history of Wikipedia, uh, there was an important point where um, looking at the front page of the site, uh, people basically realized it's important to, if, if we want to be featuring uh, an article, if we want to be sort of demonstrate, you know, giving people an opportunity to see something new on Wikipedia that they might not encounter, they might not have thought to search for, but that is interesting and that kind of showcases what Wikipedia is about, uh, there needs to be some kind of process for determining what those articles will be. And so that was the beginning of what has evolved into a rather uh, sophisticated process for reviewing an article and determining that it is considered one of the best articles on Wikipedia, and uh, and then rotating through them to to put something on the front page that's that's new every day. So you see here from today's feature art, featured article, you have a nice summary of an article, and then you have a link to the full article. So that's something that changes over every day. Um, so we're going to take a quick look at this process uh, in past. 
versions of this course have gone into a fair amount of depth on this, and um, I think uh, after talking to some students, I've found that that's maybe uh, more than is needed at this stage. But I think this is this is a good thing to understand because essentially the the top end of the uh, of the the quality scale is the thing that everything else is kind of defined in reference to. So when when people talk about, um, as, as we'll see, the difference between B-class articles and C-class articles and, and start-class articles that sort of distinguish uh, between newer articles as they're, as they're developing and improving, uh, all of those definitions are kind of in reference to the featured article concept. So we're going to go to the page WP colon FA, which is a shortcut to featured article. And that's going to describe basically what I just went over. Uh, as you see here, there are 4,000 featured articles out of 4 million articles on English Wikipedia. That ratio of about 1 in 1,000 is actually something that has been fairly consistent for many years. Um, so that gives you an idea of, of how many articles actually get through this process. And if we scroll down, we see this sort of unusual looking table of contents. This is a different format than we see on most Wikipedia pages. But you see all this, these different topic areas. So if we were to go to, uh, let's go to the education section. I'll click on this. It'll jump us down. And here's a list of the articles in education that have been determined to be featured articles. And we'll take a, let's take a look at one of them. Um, let's see, I'm going to try to look for one I haven't haven't seen before. Um, and well, let's let's say the history of Baltimore City College. So this one might be kind of interesting. I, there are lots of articles on specific universities, but I think something that's specifically about the history of a college uh, might be an interesting example. So just to take a quick look at the article, uh, as you can see, there's a, a really thorough lead section several paragraphs, lots of links, lots of footnotes. And if we scroll down a bit, you see it's pretty well organized. There are um, about eight sections. And um, they seem to, to follow a, a pretty logical structure that, um, that's going to help you learn about the topic. Keep scrolling down. You see it's pretty well illustrated. There are several images throughout the article. We've got a table here. Um, so it's graphically pleasing and, and well broken up. We have a, um, an indented quote. So compared to a lot of Wikipedia articles that you might have seen, this probably looks a little better. It looks uh, a little more accessible. And that's, um, that's, that's a reflection of what you'll find in, the, in, in pretty much any featured article. So how does it get here? The, the process for determining a featured article is it's usually someone who's written the article or one of the primary people who's worked on it that will sort of use the, the featured article status as a motivator. And so once they've put a fair amount of effort into the article, they'll nominate it themselves. And so if you look on the right-hand side here, there's a, there's a menu of various things about featured articles, and there's featured article candidates. So if we click on this, you're going to see a list of all the articles that are currently being considered for featured article. And for each one of them, there's going to be an area for discussing uh, whether or not it has earned that status. So let's just click on kind of a random one here. Hail to the Thief. So this is, a, uh, this is an album. And this, this person has given a brief description of why they think it meets the criteria. Actually, this is a, uh, a pretty short one. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to another example, um, because usually people will go into a little bit more detail in their nomination. Uh, let's look at C-SPAN. So here we go. So here we have a couple paragraphs of someone who's, so they'll describe the process of how the article has gotten to the point that it's currently at. And um, and you know maybe maybe the various people who have worked on it, and then you'll see that there's a, there's some replies to that. The most important uh, the most important aspect of these replies is going to be the featured article criteria. So I'm going to go back up to the this 
sort of menu at the top here, and let's click on that featured article criteria. So this is a list of criteria that any featured article should have. So there's a numbered list at the top of this page. Uh, you see that an article should be well written, comprehensive, well researched, neutral, and it goes on to the list. So this this number one here is all about the the writing quality. Uh, number two is about the style guidelines and formatting, sort of the, the structure of the article. Number three is that there should be appropriate images or media that are appropriate to the subject. Uh, and number four is that it's the length of the article should be appropriate to the subject. And uh, if necessary, there should be sort of subtopics that are linked out that go into more detail. Um, so actually, this, this article that we were looking at, the history of Baltimore City College, probably is one of those sub-articles um, that may have been split off from the, the general article about Baltimore City College at, at one time. So when, the, when this article is nominated, it's, it's put in this, uh, this list where it's available for anyone to comment on. You don't have to have any special status on Wikipedia. Um, you, you don't even have to have an account. You can be brand new to Wikipedia and see that uh, an article that's on a topic you're interested in has been nominated for featured article and leave some comments about whether or not you think it's one of the best articles on Wikipedia. The more you make reference to that list of criteria, the more um, weight your opinion will carry in that discussion. Um, if you just come in and say, I really liked the article, I think it's really good, um, that's fine, but it also won't really be persuasive to anyone. So it's so there'll probably be other people who are sort of more um, uh, more influential in that discussion. But if you come in and uh, and go through that that checklist and say, well, it's it's well written, and I especially thought that this paragraph uh, captured. Uh, you know, captured a, a subtle point with some nuance. Uh, you know, the article is comprehensive. I'm familiar with the topic, and it covers uh, it co covers all of the important things in a in a way that's well balanced and things like that. That's that's the kind of statement that will uh, generally really contribute to um, to a featured article discussion in a way that that moves things forward. And it's it's also very common to um, to critique an article and for, for the article to be improved during that process. So, so typically a nomination will last for several weeks, maybe, maybe even a month. Um, and often someone will, uh, will make, you know, someone might say maybe on this point, 1B would say, you know, the article seems good in general, but uh, there's this one area that, that doesn't have a lot of coverage in the article. And I think in order to make a featured article, there needs to be more. And so the person who nominated it might go back and expand that section of the article and then go back to the discussion and say, hey, I, I added this section and what do you think now? So it's, it's actually, I would say it's much more common. This, this always happens during a nomination. There's always some, some further improvement to the article, no matter how much work was put in initially. Uh, it's, it's, uh, I've never seen a case where someone didn't think of something new that could be done to improve the article. So, um, if you ever get to a point where you're nominating something for a featured article, you should be prepared to continue to put some work in to get it over that, that final hump uh, because you'll, you'll definitely find some new ideas coming up in the discussion. So um, hopefully that gives you an idea of, of, uh, of kind of the, the, the highest end of peer review on Wikipedia. But this is not something, uh, as I said before, this is not something that we'll probably be engaging with in depth in this course. Um, a featured article is often something that someone has been putting work into for a period of months uh, that maybe a number of people have contributed to. Uh, and, and typically, it's something that people delve into after they've done a fair amount of work on Wikipedia. So it's not, it's not something that most students in a six-week course uh, would take on, and if you if you do, uh, you should really be prepared to do a great deal of work, and uh, and probably continue the process after the course is over. So you're of course welcome to do that, but you should understand that you're you're getting into something big by doing that. But I mentioned before, and the um, the the WikiSue Burba badge makes reference to 
um, the general uh, quality criteria, uh, the, the, a, a, a more complete list of, of uh, levels of quality. So if this is the top end, what are the, what are the sort of more attainable uh, measures of quality? So let's look at, I'm going to type in WP colon quality, which I'm going from memory here. I think this is the page I want. Yes. Okay. So here you see a, uh, a table with uh, a color code for each quality level. And as you, um, as we just saw, featured article is right there at the top. It gives us a very short description of what those criteria are. The, this article has attained featured article status by pitch, passing an official review. And if you want to see more detail, you can click on this show button. And here again is that list of specific criteria. Um, and it, it, it also gives you um, an overview of what's, what's the reader's experience for a, uh, for a featured article, and what are editing su the suggestions? What is, what, what's the way to, um, to approach improving an article? Even, even a featured article uh, is considered a work in progress. Uh, this is especially the case for something that might be an evolving topic. So if we had a featured article, let's say, about uh, President Obama, uh, of course, the story of President Obama is still an evolving story. So, um, so of course, the Wikipedia article would evolve. But even so, uh, no further content addition should be necessary uh, unless new, new information becomes available. So if, if you're writing about uh, about something that is a historic aspect, uh, just sticking with this example of Obama's presidency, you should, you should consider that that's probably already been discussed pretty thoroughly, and the article probably already reflects a broad consensus. So you want to be very, uh, very thoughtful about any changes that you may make to it. And you might especially want to engage on the talk page, even for, for new topics. Um, to get other people's input before adding something to it. But as we go down, I'm going to skip A class because it's actually, um, it's actually not very commonly used. Uh, this is something that I think existed before featured article, and featured article has more or less replaced the A class process. Um, good article is a very similar process to featured article with slightly uh, less strict criteria. So again, there's an official list of criteria, um, but th it's, it's, not as, it's, it's not quite as high a bar. So you see the, the close is clear and concise as opposed to well-written. So it's, it's, um, it's not, <clears throat> um, that's maybe not the, the clearest example, but um, there. Anyway, I'm going I'm to leave it to you if, you if you'd like to compare them. But in, in essence, these criteria are a little bit easier to get to. Um, the, the one I was looking for is the, um, the analog of, uh, of comprehensive. A good article doesn't have to be comprehensive. I believe it, it says it has to be thorough in its coverage. So if there's, uh, if there's an area that still could use some expansion, that might be okay with a good article where it's more of an issue with a featured article. The other big distinction is that a good article is reviewed just by one person. So as opposed to being uh, a whole process that's open for anyone to comment on for a long period of time. It's basically put into a queue and any one person can volunteer to review that, that article in reference to this, uh, to these criteria. And typically there's just a back and forth discussion between the reviewer and the person who nominated the article. And again, it might be improved during that review. Uh, that all happens in public, typically on the talk page of the article, as opposed to off in the, uh, in a nominations page like the featured article, and so um, other people might jump in. There might be more people involved in it, but it's 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 basically just a one-to-one -one process. As we go down, we start to get into the areas that are more relevant to this class. So um, B class, this article is mostly complete and without major problems, but requires some further work to reach good article standards. And again, if you click on show, it'll give you more detailed criteria. Uh, C class, the article is substantial but still missing important content. So it might do a really good job of 
covering a couple of aspects of the topic, but there might be some significant things missing. Uh, start class is developing, but it's very incomplete. Uh, so it might it might be missing sourcing. It might be missing uh, you know entire sections on uh, you know it might do a good job of covering the history of the topic, but not so much on if it was a if it was about uh, a company, maybe it doesn't have a section on the executives or the founders. Maybe it doesn't have uh, a good overview of the company's products or something like that. Uh, and then at the very bottom is a stub. So uh, let's so so here there's a uh, let's look at the example of a stub. Actually, I haven't looked at this before, but I think this is uh, going to be a good, a good. Uh, this is a good sort of counterpoint to what we just looked at all the way at the top at a, in a featured article. So this article is only two sentences. So this is a, a Car Caribbean sea sponge, and it's known to be eaten by hawksbill turtles. So it doesn't really tell us much of anything about this particular sea sponge, uh, but it does have a citation. So uh, it indicates that the uh, that the topic has been covered in an independent publication and it gives us a link to that and it also gives us this other site that's a uh, that's about this topic it also has an info box which really is I don't know if this is the greatest example of a stub because most stubs will not have this in info box on the right but this gives you an idea of what it takes to kind of to start a Wikipedia article you don't need anything more than this uh, you, you might want two or three ref, uh, references, especially if there's sort of a question about whether the article is notable, about whether it's uh, whether it has enough significance to uh, to merit a Wikipedia article. A good way to establish that is by citing two or three different independent uh, sources that are uh, that that indicate the importance of the topic. But this is a this is a fine way to start an article, and we're going to get into that as we start to talk about the kinds of projects you might take on uh, for your Wikipedia assignment. So I'd like to pause hey, again. Peter? Yeah. Looks like you were just about to pause again. <laughs> Good timing. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, people may be looking at the uh, info box, thinking, "Wait, I don't know how to do that." Uh, also, I would just say that's not really necessary to start an article, right? I mean, an article could just be like a few sentences and a footnote, right? Yes, that's absolutely right. That's what I meant. Uh, that it that this I, I actually think that whoever put this in as an example of a stub uh, maybe could have chosen a better example because it's actually I would say very rare for a stub to have an info box. And you can actually have a very well-developed article that doesn't have one. So if, if you're someone who's interested in, uh, in learning how to create nice graphical tools like this uh, to supplement an article, that's great. And we can work on that. But it's absolutely not necessary. And it is a little technical and tricky to do. But actually, let's, let's look again. I noticed with the featured article that I chose, there wasn't one. Uh, what was it? History. Baltimore City College, right? Let's look at that again. So in this article, we have a, an image in the upper right, but we don't have that info box. So even though it's very common to have info boxes in articles, it's by no means required. And there are lots and lots of uh, very high quality articles on Wikipedia that don't have them. So don't, uh, don't be intimidated if that looks like a, a complicated thing to put together. So. We Let's, we don't really have yep. very many any any chat or questions happening. I just want to like ask everyone out there. You know, if you have any questions, feel free to free, feel free to throw them into the chat box at any point. And when Pete stops talking, I will highlight any questions that scroll by. Yeah. And you know, I think um, I've been covering so much in this. Session. I think it's a lot of information to absorb. I think uh, this might be a good time to just take. Let's take about two minutes and just pause. And um, and if you if you have a, a question that's formulating and you want to think about it and type it up, or if you just want to 
take a breather and get away from the computer. Let's take two minutes and, uh, and then we'll come back. No, Peter, we can hear you typing and giggling. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm turning off my mic. So I'm watching all the questions pop up, and I think that some of them may be the kind of thing we end up getting into more in lab than in class. But I think Pete's probably watching them too, so he's, he'll do fine. Yeah, I'm going to try to give all of them a quick answer, and if uh, if any of them need uh, something more in-depth, then we'll revisit that on Thursday. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to start off with Acrolith's question. Um, let's see, you had a couple here, but the so uh, you're asking who rates the articles that are in these intermediate in in the the lower classes, and that's I'm glad you asked that. That's something I meant to address. Um, so as with the as with the higher levels, these are all available for anyone to uh, to make a determination. But there is a I think there's sort of a natural tendency that the most energy tends to go towards the highest classes. So there are there are Wikipedians who are deeply devoted to the featured article and good article processes when they log in. Uh, the first thing they do is probably look at the current list of nominees uh, and look for topics that they're interested in and really really delve in and uh, put a lot of thought into the their contributions to those those reviews uh, and at the other end of the spectrum between like stub class and start class um, it's really just one person who makes those determination and if you disagree with it you can you can make the change yourself. Uh, but what I didn't show you is where it shows up uh, on the when if you're looking at an article, how to determine um, what level it's at. So that's an important part of that. Uh, with a featured article, there's always a gold star in the upper right hand part of the article, uh, and with a good article, that's going to be a green circle. For the lower classes, you're not going to see anything actually on the article itself but the information is on the talk page. So if we click on the talk page for this featured article, you can see it's actually listed here as well. There's a big box that says that it's a featured article, and that gives you a link. If you click on uh, the word identified here, that's actually going to link you to the discussion that determined that it's a featured article. Um, and it's actually there's this article milestones. Uh, drop down menu that will show you the various discussions that have gone on about this article. You can see it was actually nominated twice for featured article. The first time it was not promoted. But this is actually fairly common that people will they'll try it once and if it doesn't get through they'll go back and put some more work into it and nominate it again. Um, but if we scroll down a bit here we see that the article is of interest to a variety of wiki projects. 
So we're going to, this is, this is actually something I'm going to come back to uh, in a moment. A wiki project, as I've, I've mentioned earlier in the class, is, um, is basically a place for people interested in a topic to work together. So let's click on the one about wiki project history. And you see this blue box with the star in it. It says this article has been rated as FA class in the project's quality scale. So this box will indicate the quality rating of the article regardless of whether it's a stub or a start class or a featured article. This is where that, uh, where that determination is made. So if you're looking at an article that is, I'm trying to think of something that's, um, uh, that might not be rated. Um, I'm not thinking of an example off the top of my head. Uh, well, let's just look at one of our articles. So let's look at open educational resources. So we're looking at the article, and I click on the talk tab. And we see that the, the wiki projects that have expressed interest in this article are wiki project education and wiki project open access. And for both of them, it's, it's rated as a C-class article. Um, the importance rating is something I'm not going to get into here. It's not as it's not really as significant to our, our purposes in this class. Um, so if we it, it, let's let's say several of you were to work on this article, and um, and then I came along and was reviewing the article and felt that it had been brought up to B class. The way that I would make that change is to edit this page. And there's a bit of code that um, that makes it so we have wiki project education, and you see here it says class equals C. I would just change that to class equals B, and I would do it for both of these projects. So uh, sometimes people from one project will will evaluate an article and they don't necessarily update the other one. But usually the most important factor here is just who's looked at it the most recently. Like I said, there's not usually a lot of disagreement about these things. And if you um if you if you feel that an article has has met a certain criterion, there's probably not anyone that's going to argue with you. There's probably nobody that's you know at these lower levels, there's probably nobody that's really looked at <clears throat> at that in uh, recently, like they might have, if it's if it's been rated, it was probably before the most recent work was done on it. So your opinion on that is probably going to be the best one. Uh, and then it would be if you're going to make a change like this, though, this is a place where it's especially important <clears throat> to leave a clear edit summary. Um, so you might say uh, improved to B class uh, since you know, five new sources have been added or something like that. You want to give some indication of, of what it is that makes you think that this is now B class instead of C class. Uh, if it's, if it's, if it's really, if it's something that you think is, uh, requires more explanation than that, you might want to also leave a new note on the talk page. So you might leave, you might create a new section, um, these menus are kind of collapsed because I have the, the font size increased. Uh, but you know, you might leave a new section and say um, quality rating for the headline, and then explain why I just brought this up from C class to B class, and here's why I think that's justified. And you might find that somebody else takes an interest, but more often than not, people are going to just let this go and assume that you've made a good uh, a good evaluation. But if they do disagree. Uh, it, usually that's going to end up in a, in a good discussion. Someone might say, uh, I really don't think it's quite ready for B class. Here are the things that I think need to happen before it gets there. And that's going to lead to the article getting better and uh, eventually getting to something that everyone can agree is B class. So uh, Acrolyst, does that cover your question pretty well? This is, this is something we definitely would want to uh, revisit in the lab if you want to get into more depth. Uh, but maybe in the meantime, you might want to kind of go out and look at the quality ratings of various articles and kind of get a feel for how this plays out in practice. So let's see. I'm on to the next question. Oh, you were <coughs> you also echo if you also mentioned the um, uh, the name Burba badge. Uh, I meant to point out where this um, 
where the uh, the the badge originated. So it actually came from this concept of service awards on Wikipedia. So this is an interesting page to look through sometime if you like. Um, it lists a number of different sort of levels of editing that are simply based on number of edits. And these are things that people basically award to themselves. So the one that this badge is based on is, uh, as you observed, it's called Novice Editor or Burba. So there are sort of two names for each one, depending on whether you want sort of a formal sounding name or something more whimsical. Uh, and this is what the Burba badge looks like. You see it doesn't have the SOO in the top. So that's for School of Open. That's our ver variant of this, of this badge. So all these require is that you achieve a certain number of edits in a certain uh, amount of time. So this is 200 edits in one month. Um, and what, what is added for ours is that you also should accomplish a specific thing, that you also should bring an article up to a certain level um, in the quality rating. Um, so I'm, let's see, next question. Uh, I think Therese had, um, oh, so you, you have a question about images that I do think is something I'd rather get into uh, on the, on our course discussion page or uh, in the lab. The short answer to your question is no, um, an image does have to be um, uploaded to Wikimedia Commons or technically it could be uploaded to Wikipedia itself, uh, but in most cases it's uploaded to Commons. Uh, it's, it's not possible to load an image from another site uh, like it is with, with most websites. So if I, if I create my own website and I have an image published on Flickr or if I see an image on someone else's website that I want to pull in, uh, I can do that using HTML, but within, within Wikipedia it's actually not possible to do that. Um, and part of the reason for that is that Wikipedia aims to, it has some very specific uh, requirements around images that they must be freely resharable. There are some exceptions to that, but, but as much as possible, uh, we want to use images that are freely licensed or they're in the public domain and that permits other people to republish them in different ways. So we can get into some of that in the lab session if you, uh, if you have further questions. Um, and Glenn, you're asking about the coordinates. Um, this is again going to be something fairly detailed, but just to point out what you're asking about for the other students. Um, let's see. So the, the, there are coordinates listed in the upper right that would allow you to find uh, Baltimore City College on a map. If we click on this, it's going to give us this list of various websites that we can pull it up on a map. So you can pull it up in Google Maps or Bing Maps, uh, OpenStreetMap. Uh, so if you click on this, this map icon, it's actually going to take you to uh, you know, a version of that in the map. And there is a, um, a standard way of including that in an article. That's a fairly technical thing, so let's let's leave that for now so that we can get through uh, the rest of this class. But please do bring that up again in the lab or on the top page. Um, and image requests, there are pages where uh, where image requests are coordinated. I'm not remembering the main one off the top of my head, so I will uh, let's watch the course talk page and I will try to answer that there uh, after class. So, Sarah, I haven't been able to scroll through everything. If there's anything else that's really important, please let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to try to wrap things up here. Um, I think that we're okay to proceed. Okay. Very good. So, uh, I, I, had, I mentioned earlier that Sarah G. Uh, had left a comment I wanted to look at. So, let's just, um, it was on the Open Textbooks article. Um, and this is just something I thought I'd point out in case there's anyone in the class that hasn't really gotten out and, uh, and, and left a note on a talk page outside of our course yet. I think this is a really good example of, of how to engage on an article. So if we scroll to the bottom here, this is the section I was talking about expanding the article. Um, so Sarah has, has found, um, something that she'd like to include in the article. So she's saying broadening, broadening the coverage to include mo uh, more non-US based information and she gives an example. Um, so when you want to do something substantial with an existing article, it's a really good idea to leave a note like this. Um, 
you can certainly just work directly on the article, but other people might not understand what's motivating what you're trying to do, and they might they might disagree with that where they would agree if they if they saw uh, what it is that you're trying to do. In this case, she got a very quick response. So this person said, um, sounds good, but make sure that everything you add is verifiable and reliable sources. And they, these are linked. So um, if Sarah needed a refresher on what those things mean, uh, she could click on the links and get, uh, the, get to the Wikipedia policies around verifiability and sourcing. So um, Sarah, I'm, I, I'm not going to actually put you on the spot here because we are running a little short on time. I appreciate your willingness uh, to discuss this, and maybe we can get back to this in the lab too if you're if you're there on Thursday. Um, but good work with this, and uh, and thanks for providing something that I could use to illustrate this point. Peter, um, so Sarah makes the point that it was kind of a scary step to actually dive in and post something on the talk page, and it's funny because I forget that at some point that was a scary step because it's not for me now. Still, for me, I'm not really the experienced Wikipedian here compared to Pete. I'm, you know, I've been editing very lightly for years and years. I'm more on the um, online education OER side of this course. But um, for me, making a suggestion on a talk page feels very easy, <laughs> whereas actually editing the article is the scary step. So you should feel just absolutely free to throw anything on a talk page anytime. The only thing is, you know, you know there's always going to be a record of the fact that you posted that there. That's the only thing to bear in mind. But um, it's um, it's such a great way to engage with the community and become a you know a user that other users take seriously. So yay! Yeah, and I see Sarah G has uh, responded in the chat window. She says, it was great to see that others are encouraging helpful and responsive to new users. And uh, that's, that really is, uh, it's a great feeling. Um, it's not always the case. So uh, you know, it's certainly possible that someone will be cranky or argumentative. Uh, I don't want to give you the idea that it's always like this. But I do think that the more, you're, the more you're open and clear about what it is that you're trying to do, the more you're going to encourage positive responses. So. Um, Typically, the things that lead to conflict and disagreements are when people are not being clear about what it is that they, you know, what their vision for the article is, or why they're trying to add certain things to it. Um, so I, I would really, I would, I would very strongly encourage you to get used to leaving notes on the talk page uh, for an article or addressing a, a specific user. If you see something in a discussion and um, and you're not if you don't really feel like responding on the article talk page where a number of people are likely to be in the discussion, you might want to go to that person's user talk page. So, um, you know, if so here uh, this person T class left this extensive note about updating the article a while ago, well maybe you want to go to this person's talk page and leave him a note, which it still would be publicly visible, but um, usually it's just him or people who work closely with him that would see that. Um, I, I think the it's it's this is as good a time as any to to remind you that Wikipedia is a place where um, let's see how do how how to say this it's it's experienced Wikipedians are very used to the idea that um, that change and improvement to articles to the encyclopedia comes as a result of a dynamic process. So if you leave a comment and somebody else disagrees, uh, that is something that overall is regarded as healthy interaction. Um, because it's going to because surfacing that disagreement and working through it is the thing that, that ultimately leads to improvement. So the more you can get yourself into a into a frame of mind where if you see an opportunity to improve something or to suggest something, you just leave a note and then come back and see what other people think about it, the better. Um, if if you're if you're feeling if you're feeling nervous about leaving your first comment like this, um, it's entirely understandable. But that's something that at some point you should just uh, take a deep breath and dive in <laughs> because uh, that's that's really what all of this is about. Anyway, I um, 
I see I really have not left uh, the time that I meant to to introduce. I, I, I put together a page. Let's see, I'm going to go back to our final project page. Um, and actually, so I'm I'm going to need to put a link to this. I created a, a sub page called Ideas. And if you're trying to select your final project and you don't, uh, you, you kind of need some suggestions, I put a couple of, I put a few ideas in here. So I, um, I took an example for creating a new article. Um, I've, I've talked about how you might go about creating the article on OER Africa. So OER Africa is an organization that, uh, that clearly does meet Wikipedia's notability guideline, but there is no article yet on Wikipedia. Um, so I, I have some, some thoughts here about my, how you might approach that. And I also made a video um, down here under how to find sources on which to base your article. So you might want to watch. This is a five-minute video on YouTube that shows how to go about uh, digging up good source material. Um, I have a section here for finding ideas to build on. So if you look on our class talk page or the Communicate OER talk page, uh, you'll find people talking about various articles, and that might give you an idea of one that you want to work on. And then also, I took the example of the article on MOOCs, uh, so massive open online courses, and put a few thoughts of, of things that you might want to do to improve that article. So um, this first section, uh, there's the concept of XMOOC versus CMOOC. It's something that is covered in the article, but per I find it a little bit difficult to, to grasp what that distinction is just based on what's said in the Wikipedia article. So I think this is a really good example of a place where even if you're not, you actually might have an advantage in improving the article by not being uh, deeply experienced in the topic. Um, if, you, if you're just learning about MOOCs for the first time, uh, you might be in a better position than an expert to see what is going to be helpful to someone else who's new to the topic. So here are a couple of suggestions of, of how you might improve that article. Um, there's also a discussion that I think I mentioned earlier in the class on, uh, at the top of the article is a banner that's asking whether this article should be merged with, uh, with an article called MOOCs in Europe. So there's a little bit of discussion on that. There's just two people who've, who've weighed in. So you might want to click on the discussion tab and, and uh, let them know what you think. Is it useful to have two separate articles or would it be better to have them both in, uh, both of those topics covered in the same article? Um, there's, there's really no right or wrong answer with this, but uh, it's, it's always helpful to move through those discussions and get to some discussion that uh, basically to choose one or the other. Should we merge or should we not merge um, so that everyone can kind of be going forward on the same path? And having people jump in and, and uh, say what makes sense to them is the way that that happens. Uh, and finally, this article is a good example of something I, I see in a lot of articles on broad topics where it's something I would describe as bottom heavy, right? It's become, um, lots of people have added a lot of detailed information. Let's, uh, let's take a look at the article to get a sense of this. So if you look at the table of contents, you see there are lots and lots of sections here. Um, and there are, if we jump down to references, there are lots and lots of sources. But going back to the top, it's actually, it's a pretty, short lead section compared to, uh, compared to some of the other articles that we've seen. So there's a really good opportunity here. If it, uh, Again, uh, this is a good opportunity for someone who might not be, you know, if you don't consider yourself an expert in MOOCs, you're still, um, you still, you probably have a good perspective on what does and doesn't make sense to someone who doesn't, who, who isn't an expert. So, reading through the article and drawing out what are the most important points and figuring out what needs to be summarized in that lead section is a, a really good way to, um, to move this towards being a, a higher quality article. And uh, that's, that's something that you might want to just do piece by piece. It's also something that you might want to bring up on the talk page. Um, if you're going to be working on that over a period of a couple of few weeks, uh, it's a good idea to, to put that on the talk page because that's going to explain to other people who might be watching the article what it is that you're up to. So um, going back to this, so this, this, this page that we've been looking at, this ideas page I started, 
I am going to put a link to this in our uh, both on the the final project page and also in the um, in the, the the navigation template that we have for Wikisu. Um, so this this chart that we've been referring to. So I'll put a, a link to it next to final course fi uh, final project description. So if you want to find this list and refer to it throughout the week uh, or throughout the rest of the class, that's where that will live. Um, it's we're at the end of the hour. I didn't cover how to um, how to formally claim your article for your final project. But don't worry about that. Um, it's there. There is a place where we will be signing up for them, and I'll I'll cover that in the lab and again next week. Um, but this is something that we can, as long as this gets done by you know within the next few weeks, that's fine. Um, so it's going to help us to review your article. But as you're just getting started with it, it's not necessary that you do it just yet. So we'll come back to that. Uh, Sheva, I see you are asking if the previous courses are on YouTube, and they are somewhat, uh, but we don't have all of the sessions. So I'm going to just quickly point the way to that. I'm clicking on this round two link in our course header. If you scroll to the bottom, there is a, um, or actually not all the way to the bottom. Uh, this box here is sort of the equivalent of the box for our current class, and you can see that there are archives for there are Blackboard archives for all of the classes, and there are YouTube archives for just a few of them. We're going to be trying to backfill that so that they are um, so that more of them are available on YouTube, but we haven't done it yet. Anyway, uh, thank you all for attending, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what articles you're interested in in working on for the rest of the course. We'll see you in the lab session on Thursday. We'll see you on the course talk page, and we'll see you next week. So take care, and see you then. Thank you, guys. Please come to the lab with all of your detailed questions, and we can do very um, intensive Q and A. I mean, the good kind. The good kind of intensive. You know, nitty gritty. We'll see you there. <laughs>